What's up today, guys? Welcome back to the RT Clinic. I've got a special video today. We're gonna to show how to turn a Philips V60 into a mechanical ventilator. Ready, set, cut to the intro. Welcome back guys. We have a V60 ventilator here. Actually, we call these V60 BiPAP. Actually, it's called non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. BiPAP is kind of a, uh, of a commercial term, but it can do a lot of different things. But one really cool thing and how it can help us out in a tight situation is it can be used as a mechanical ventilator. Now, one great thing about it is it doesn't have air and oxygen in the back, and that's one thing that really limits you in an emergency. You have to have medical air coming out of the wall at 50 PSI. The great thing about this, it has a blower inside of it, so the only thing we have to use is an oxygen hookup. Now, the cool thing about this oxygen hookup, as you can see here, this uh, is what we have started using for quite a while at our facility. This is, a, we call that a takeoff, called a power takeoff if you want, but this is a takeoff, so 50 PSI here. You also have a flow meter on the outside here, uh, so you can deliver nebulizers or whatever you might need. This unscrews from this part, so you don't have to unplug the BiPAP to give the, to give the neb and that kind of fun stuff, but look, there's only one hose and it plugs into the wall here. So let's plug this in and get started. So the 100% oxygen comes in and then it gets blended to whatever we set on this machine. Now, if you're used to the other Puritan Bennett type of um, ventilators like a Puritan Bennett 840, uh, Puritan Bennett 960, which I'm not super familiar with myself, this works somewhat similar to that. It's got a touch screen. It's got a lot of nice options on it. You're also going to see that it has a single limb circuit. So we use this for non-invasive. Uh, well, you say single limb, you inhale, the mass seals on their face, how do they exhale? Well, it has an expiratory valve on it. And so all of these circuits have an expiratory valve that circulates the air around so that the CO2 can come out. That's really important to keep that open at all times. Uh, specifically, when we're trying to limit the amount of aerosol in the, let's just say aerosol in the air or aerosol generated by this, there are some different types of hookups you can put on this where you can put filters directly on top of this expiratory valve. In this case, I'm just gonna put some extra filters on it and kind of show, to, show you how to use it as a ventilator. So the cool thing about this also is it has a built-in battery. So you could transport on it. If you look at the bottom here, if you can see that part, there's a place to put two oxygen tanks so you can hook up oxygen tanks to the back and this is gonna be a fully transportable uh, ventilator if you need it in that case. Um, and the battery lasts for quite a while actually. So internal battery, oxygen flowing in, great to use if you are out of ventilators and you gotta use something else, this will work. Let's get into the nuts and bolts of how to set it up. So let's get started. You can see I have it in standby mode. So let's turn it off first, then turn it back on. So we're gonna go off here. And then anytime it gives you this thing, it says, are you sure you wanna do this? And you're gonna say yes by touching the screen, shut it down. So just to go over the circuit a little bit, we have uh, an inspiratory filter on here. You see there is actually the pressure line that's gonna come out. This circuit's gonna go all the way out, whoop, all the way out to the patient on this side of the circuit. I'm gonna show you my setup here. So we have our expiratory valve right there and our pressure line hooking up. You see this is a 99.99% bacterial viral filter. And then also you see some moisture in there because I've been testing it. I put an HME on here. Um, you can run this as a heated system. Uh, we have a heater down here. You could run it over that heater uh, as a Passover or with an active heat humidification. In this case, it's gonna be in a definite pinch. So we're gonna be probably using HMEs in that case. So HME on here, heat moisture exchanger. Of course, that's gonna help to keep a lot of the moisture out of this side of the circuit. And then this can catch a lot more. Um, optimally, we'd have a different type of uh, expiratory valve here and the expiratory valve there would uh, have a filter on the outside of it too. So you can put a mask over that too. That just keeps the aerosol generation down. So that's the setup that we have. We'll sit this over here. All right, so let's turn this thing on and get started if we wanna do some kind of mechanical ventilation. So 
Down here in the bottom, we're going to hit start. All right, so initially comes up, you're going to see some stuff at the top. Alarm silence, alarm review, uh, sorry, alarm reset. Informational messages, this comes up every single time. So let's do a silence on this right now, just so we can start thinking for ourselves a little bit. And you're going to see all these things on here, how they kind of go. We got a yellow alarm, this ET trach set up, bacterial filter is installed. Those are all kind of just nice alarms. We're going to hit alarm reset up here and get rid of those. And then let's go over here and hook a, hook a, let's hook my test lung up to this. Okay. That'll make it be a little more quiet. So we're back. We're going to take a look at some of our settings that we have. I started pretty high here. Uh, but first thing we want to do, you see, we have ET trach on there and these other alarms, once they're kind of crossed out, that means they're no longer functional. So we can reset those, get rid of them. It still wants me to address this. And what I want to address here is what type of adaption I have, if I have a mask or if I have an ET tube or a trach and I do in that case. So let's go down here to modes or sorry to menu. And you're going to see mask port and you're going to tell it, okay, do you have ET trach? That's a mask one, mask two, mask three, mask four or other. So you got to do a leak test and others. So we're going to see, we have this one here, hit accept. And then it's going to ask me what type of expiratory valve. This is a respironics valve. There's different types of valves, none other, lots of other stuff. So we have this one we're going to accept. That gets rid of all those little kind of annoying messages. So if we're going to look at a mode that we're going to go for, for uh, ventilation via ET tube or trach, we're going to go to modes. This has three options, CPAP, ST is spontaneous timed, AVAPS, uh, there's a video on that. If you want to look in the top, there's a video to AVAPS, how to run it. We're not going to use it in this case. Right now we're using, let me go back real quick. We are using PCV. So I already have it turned on PCV. This is our settings. Let's turn some of these things down a little bit here. Okay. Maybe it won't be quite as loud. So PCV might, uh, and activate that bad boy. So. PCV, you might notice, uh, looks a lot like ST because we have IPAP, EPAP, rate. So that's an actual rate, FIR2 of 50. We have an I time, which is really interesting in PCV because I time is not variable. It is set and it's going to work really good if you're having oxygenation problems for your patient. Rise time, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then if you see this little button here, it's kind of cool, something Phillips added. This is a 100% oxygen button. So if they desat or if you're taking them off or something's going on in case maybe you're suctioning them, if you have a ET tube in somebody or a trach, great thing to hit. You hit that, it actually gives them a boost of 100% oxygen for two minutes. So that's kind of cool. You can add two minutes there. I like that feature, I'll hit cancel on it. So uh, let's all look at our graphics. I'm really into graphics these days. So let's, I'm gonna decrease the size of these graphics a little bit and make it so you can see more per each one. We have scalar waveforms, <clears throat> of course, pressure time, uh, flow time and volume time. It's great to be able to measure those. And you see the orange aspect on them. That means that is a timed breath. It also is denoted by this piece right here because it says timed. So you can see it's a time breath. So we have uh, settings across the bottom, boom, and then patient values across the top. So there we go. All right, so let's make a couple changes to this. What we're going to do uh, with PCV is we're going to kind of change some things around as far as we're going to manipulate the pressures to try to get like pressure control ventilation, try to get an optimal tidal volume and oxygenation, especially if people are having ADR, ARDS, ADR, ARDS type symptoms and, you know, any kind of uh, stiff lung type syndrome. So we go in here, we change these pressures. You see a touch, adjust it. You can turn it up to what you want. Let's go to 30 or so, just like pressure control ventilation, except now you're going to see our waveforms on this next breath are going to shoot up. Boom. You can hear the change, but if you go over here and hit this, you'll be able to see. Now you can see your waveform a little bit better. So you see that nice square waveform for pressure. The reason we have that is because I made a long eye time. Remember that's a set eye time, standard eye times we run, you know, we run about a one, 1 1.2. You see, that's a, this is a shorter eye time. But what it doesn't give you, if you notice, is that nice plateau. So if you're having oxygenation problems, 
that really nice plateau, especially on a paralyzed patient, can really get you a lot of area of oxygenation. So increasing that eye time, you see we can increase it and you are got our eye to E ratio here. We increase, increase, increase it. We don't really want to go past a one to two, but this long eye time, watch what it does to our waveform. Very nice flat waveform at the top. You see you even have a little bit of crest on your volume waveform. And so that's going to help a lot for with oxygenation. From this, you can adjust a lot of different things. This is a pretty nice size tidal volume, 690, uh, minute ventilation 8.3. We can set alarms on this, just like a standard ventilator, alarm settings, high rate, low rate, high tidal volume, low tidal volume, high inspiratory, low inspiratory, low minute ventilation. That's really a good one to have in a uh, low inspiratory pressure time or low pressure time. So those are all nice. They're pretty much generic when they come out but they work and you can tighten them up a little bit if you want. One other thing uh, is our rise time. So rise time is really nice. Let's change rise time right now. It's one. This is actually a really nice feature to use on a, a non-invasive ventilation to add, add, add added level of comfort for your patient. You see rise time is really described right here. It's the speed that you're gonna go from EPAP to IPAP and it's kind of like the angle. So I'd like to think of it as, as like the comfort level. So if you're going at a level of five, you're more at an angle. So it's gonna be going to the top pressure a little bit different. So there's one, there's one extreme, it goes really fast. The other extreme, you can listen to the waveform, listen to the machine. See how it takes a while to get up there? It doesn't actually barely get to that top pressure. It almost turns it into a, a kind of a sine waveform a little bit from initial square waveform. It's a little softer for the patient, really good for non-invasive. But uh, in the case of mechanical ventilation, we're gonna tighten this down a little bit. As you can see, that ramp goes that way or goes that way. So we're gonna tighten that down a little bit because we wanna get to that top pressure and help to oxygenate them really well. So PCV is a great mode for this. It will also respond to a spontaneous breath. Let me make this thing breathe spontaneously. You ready? There you go, you see your blue waveform. If you look up at the top left where it says spontaneous, that means it was triggered by the patient. The great thing with PCV is also is that it finishes the breath for you. So similarly, kind of the AC, if you will, uh, finishes the breath each time. And you can see we have a spontaneous rate now. And now it's giving us percent of the patient triggered breaths, which is a nice one. And we should have zero leak because we're hooked up to an endotracheal tube. So this machine is very versatile. Actually, I heard a story that it was used um, in the Joplin, Missouri uh, tornadoes. They actually, when power was lost by a hospital and they don't have enough, the vents run out of battery, you don't have backup. This is nice because these have battery backup also. So they could be, they were used at that time, which could be true or not, I don't know, but they were used at that time to uh, ventilate patients. So. That is the Philips V60, um, very common. You see we have our oxygen hookup on the bottom. And uh, let's go around this side. All you can look up and down. One really cool aspect is they had had some touchscreen issues with some of these. So if you have issues with a touchscreen, you can use this thing up here. And if you want to change things, you go around a circle. And if you want to confirm something, you can hit the button to confirm it. So you actually, it's kind of like a hard key instead of a, instead of using it um, uh, like a touch screen. So you wouldn't need to shut it off. This is how you shut it off. So uh, before we shut off, just one of the real keys, make sure you're always monitoring that XL tidal volume. That's really, really good to when you're changing pressures because we don't use a lot of pressure control ventilation, so monitoring that tidal volume, minute ventilation, comparing that to your um, arterial blood gas CO2 and getting your pH with the normal range is really important. So um, we looked at alarms, we looked at modes, uh, menu, got some other things. We can make it more loud. We can dim it a little bit, make it the more dim screen, make it super loud, and then uh, max port vent information, screen lock, we don't use that a lot, actually. Screen lock, it looks like it's locked, but then if you can read, you can figure out how to get out of it, you see. Screen locked, press the check mark, so you can unlock it that way. So um, we're just hoping that people that try to mess with the screen can't read. So um, go to standby, best way to shut it off. 
So right now, if you read this, it says essentially that it's waiting 56 seconds. It's counting down for you to pull them off. So when we take our test lung off, you're going to see it's going to turn and it's going to go straight back into standby mode. And there's a little bit of air coming out of here right now. It's trying to sense. Let's see if I can get it. It's trying to sense. Here's the problem though. If you hook a patient back up to that, it's not going to work. It doesn't trigger, see? It doesn't come back on. You have to hook them back up and make sure you come back and hit that button to turn them back on the previous settings. So. Phillips V60. Thanks for watching today, guys. Um, I really want to um, give a thanks to all your RTs, nurses, physicians, EMTs that are out there on the front lines right now. Um, I really appreciate everything that you're doing and um, couldn't get through this, guys, without you. So it's really important to stay healthy uh, during this time, stay mentally healthy. I think it's extremely important. And so um, please comment in. If you have any questions, please send them into my email at the bottom in the description. And, um, you know, you guys are doing a great job. And I'm so excited for summer to come and so excited to be on the other side of this unprecedented stuff going on right now. So see you guys later. Give some suggestions for videos.